Hey guys, it's Philip McCurran, thanks for checking out my vlog. Today I wanted to have a little conversation, I want to open up a conversation. In some way it's kind of extending from the last one called the, uh, the Celebrity Illusion, but this one is um, a little bit more specific. It's a conversation that I opened up at a recent uh, mentoring weekend that I ran. And that was about how, and I've talked about this before, but in, maybe in a different way now, but how we are really obsessed with putting people on pedestals. Um, literally, we were, we're just looking and scouring the world for anyone that we can get and to put up onto a pedestal. Um, and again, I'm not speaking on behalf of you necessarily, I'm generalizing. I have to in terms of a video just to kind of get a message across. And just for what it's worth, what I believe happens when we put people on a pedestal, which I've said before, when we put them on a pedestal, whether it's an inch high or a mile high, we're basically saying one thing. Not that they're just better than us and that we respect them to some extent more than we respect ourselves, but they're better than us. That we are not enough. That's in essence what we're saying, okay? So the one and the example, and this is just an example. I could create an example out of many, many characters, but it is an example nonetheless. And the example I use is, and used in the conversation with Steve Jobs. Now, in all the documentaries and different things that I've looked at, and, and, and not a whole lot of research, but just you know, looking around in terms of this man, his life, how he lived it, how he operated, and of course, as he departed this world, the type of effect in the vacuum it had. But leaving aside technology and the vacuum there, or the potential vacuum or not, I want to talk more in terms of our emotional connection to Steve Jobs, our emotional connection to anyone in, in a place of power, our emotional connection to, to people who are in that celebrity type of environment. And when Steve Jobs died and when he passed away, there was literally people having candlelit visuals all around the world. There were people literally lying on the pavement, uncontrollable, distraught, who had to be literally almost peeled off the pavement and carried home, uncontrollable. And they were so deeply devastated, and yet they'd never met the man. They had never been in his company. All they had ever done is bought one of his pieces of equipment. Now, before you, you, you turn off this video, just, just stick with me for a minute, okay? I'm not trying to suggest that what Steve Jobs did was insignificant. But what I'm trying to do is create some context and perspective here in terms of how and why did he get up onto such a pedestal and why do we as individuals, as humanity, put him up there and give him such respect, more respect than arguably we give ourselves? Because in the end of the day, what he did was he took a phone and he changed the way it looked the way it operated. He took a computer and he changed the way it looked and the way it operated. And then he created other devices that once were never there before, such as iPads and stuff. So in other words, he made technology approachable for people like myself. By God, I needed it, I'm telling you. So not to take away from that, but I'm just still with why this man? Because if you dig deeper into this man and how he operated and how he interacted with people, Quite often, what shows up is behavior in terms of his interpersonal relationships, his loyalty or lack of loyalty, and his ability to turn his back on some of the closest people to him in order to, to advance what he wanted to do. So really, some of those characteristics are things that we commonly talk about, are things that we don't really appreciate in people, that aren't necessarily synonymous with integrity and, and goodness and love and support and all those other things. So this is a man, basically, who, who did something great, but was it as big as, as, as we sometimes hold? And secondly, is he treated people in a way that typically most of us think is inappropriate in the context of business and in life. But let's dig a little bit deeper again. So then we think about, okay, so people say he changed the world. I said, okay, he changed the world. Did he change the world? Did he just change an aspect or a, a, a way that we approach the world, or a way we approach a particular aspect of the world? And that is arguably communication and interactiveness and so-called connection. But let me just provide a challenge or a question. Is it even remotely possible that in 25 or 35 or 45 years from now, that we will look back in history and we will look back and identify the period of history that we're in right now as one of the most disconnected in the history of mankind? Because when you walk into restaurants today, you have entire families looking at iPhones and iPads and everything else, and not just the, you know, Samsung g gadgets, etc. It, is, is it connecting us or is it disconnecting us? So if we look back in history, even if we just gather our awareness around it now and actually believe to some extent, it, there is a disconnectedness which comes with this incredible connectiveness, if that makes any sense. 
We could be looking back in 25 years from now and saying Steve Jobs was a pioneer in one of the most disconnected stages in human history. But yet we continue to put him on a pedestal. Let's just say I'm wrong. Let's just say we look back and there's something we can see today and we're looking back in hindsight and calling disconnectedness. In fact, what we've discovered is that he held the, the societal uh, framework together with his ability to allow us to connect. Let's just say I'm so far off the mark. It's nothing to do with disconnectedness. It was complete connectiveness. And on a deep social level, Steve Jobs has done something incredible, even more amazing than we think he's done already. Even if that happens 25 and 30 years from now, does that still give him the place that we've given him in, in society, or most people have given him in society? That we push him up as some human god? That we worship, that we are uncontrollably upset when he died, when he passed away? I don't mean to be disrespectful, I really don't. And, I, and I'm not just picking someone who's passed away so they can't defend themselves, that's not my intent either. He just happens to be one of those men, one of those individuals, one of those humans that is more recent and has, has, has literally been given this status of a man who changed the world. But how did he change the world and what did he do to get there? And what did he really do when you break it down? He created pieces of technology. And yet we, we treat him and have treated him and continue to hold him in such a huge base. It's just an example that we can give out to many, many other characters in today in business or who have previously passed away. But the other thing to wrap this up is that if we give someone like that such value, such value in society, then how are we meant to derive even half that value towards the most important relationship, which is the one with ourselves? When the benchmark is turning over billions of dollars, is creating technology that has never existed before, that it is ultimately changing the world. Because if that's our benchmark for, you know, pedestalness or respect, well then how are we ever going to live up to that? Because unless we create something extraordinary, unless we change the world, unless we turn over X amount of billion of dollars, we're not going to achieve the type of success and value to be good enough. And therefore we'll constantly, no matter what we do in life, no matter what we achieve, it's never going to quite be enough. So it's just a conversation. I don't have a solution. All I do know is as I travel the world and I work with individuals, whether they're the wealthiest individuals in the United States or whether they're the poorest people in the United States or whether they're very wealthy people in Canada or anywhere else for that matter, I see the same thing showing up time and time again. And that is our absolute need deep, deep, deep need, driven by an insecurity within ourselves, driven by society, to push people up onto a pedestal that with respect, deserve respect, but not that much respect. Thank you.